Okay, uh, in this video we will look at the implications of the fixed point that we were talking about last time. Okay, what kind of fixed point you have depends on the theory that you have. Okay, so let's uh, begin with a quick summary of what we have done so far. So let me just write down the solution of Kalanzi-Manzik equation because that is what we are trying to analyze. Okay, so solution of equation and that is the renormalized Green's function, the endpoint Green's function at scaled up momenta. I am writing gr instead of lambda because I am not saying anything specific to five four theory. So just to be very clear about that, I have changed the notation slightly. So we have seen that. You can relate the Green's function on the left hand side to Green's the same Green's function without scaled up momenta, but the coupling constants replaced by running couplings and running mass and the mass parameter MR replaced by M bar, the running mass. and gamma tilde okay, I am not putting a phi this time so that it is uh, it's more generic but we will still keep thinking that it is uh, related to the field phi okay, okay that is what we had and again gamma tilde m is 1 plus gamma m and gamma tilde phi is d phi tilde plus gamma phi okay but now you have gamma f i'm not writing gamma phi so you'll have the uh, the canonical dimension of the appropriate field that you are looking at and the corresponding um, this dimension, anomalous dimension. Okay, just a second. Okay, so that is what we have, and then last time we talked about fixed points. what's a fixed point fixed point is when you have beta tilde equal to 0 okay so the value of g bar that is gc some value of g bar gc for which beta tilde is 0 let's call it here i should have written beta tilde gc so g bar when it takes the value gc then beta tilde gc is 0 okay that's a fixed point and you can have an ultraviolet fixed point okay or you can have an infrared fixed point and so here gc uh, could be or could not be 0 now if gc is 0 Okay, meaning the uh, 
the running coupling vanishes at the fixed point, then we have asymptotic freedom. Okay, and the theory is called asymptotically free. Okay, five four theory is not not asymptotically free. QCD is a asymptotically free theory. Okay, QCD is the uh, theory of quarks and gluons, and it's based on a on SU3 group. Okay, but we are not going to talk about this in here. But um, this is um, an important theory because it describes strong interactions. Okay, and uh, this is an asymptotically free theory. Okay, and that is why it's uh, it becomes very uh, it is easy to do calculations in easy meaning. You can do calculations in in this theory at uh, high energies because at high energies uh, things start behaving like free theory, as I was uh, telling you earlier in the last video, right? Because here. If the coupling is very small, then the effective coupling is very small, then it is essentially a free theory, okay, if it goes to zero. So, um, let's look at the implications of this. So, let's analyze this exponential factor. Let's see how it modifies this. Um, what is the effect of having a fixed point on this exponential factor? Okay, so let's analyze that. So let us look at the exponential factor. Factor in the solution. Okay, so that exponential factor is e to the this integral d 0 to t in dt prime n gamma tilde Okay, so when the theory has a UV fixed point, ultraviolet fixed point, okay, at GC, that is G bar of T GR goes to GC. Right, the uh, the running coupling goes to this value G C, as T goes to infinity. So when you have really uh, scaled up all the momenta by infinite amount, then the running coupling, the running coupling that you should use on the right hand side of the solution of Kalanzi-Manzik equation, there you should use G C. Okay. So we are. Um, Looking at this theory with, with the, uh, looking at a theory with a ultraviolet fixed point at GC, and then let's analyze what this in, uh, this exponential factor becomes. Okay, let me give it a name. Let's call it. Let's call it capital A. So this exponential factor becomes integral zero to t dt prime. And I'm right now just writing gamma tilde as d plus. So earlier I used to write d phi, phi tilde, but I'm just writing d now. Okay, it's the it's the canonical dimension of the corresponding field. But if you wish, you can keep writing this here. Okay, but I'll just omit. So d plus gamma. Okay, so this is gamma tilde, right? D phi plus gamma phi, but I am omitting the phi. And gamma function, um, 
anomalous dimension is a function of g bar and g bar is a function of tgr okay so this is i have not taken any limits i have just written the same thing instead of gamma tilde i have written uh here here it will be good if i changes okay instead of gamma tilde i have written d plus gamma that's all now let's do the following i write it zero to some some value t not plus t not to t so i've just split arbitrarily and i'm assuming that t not is some large large value of t okay t not is some large number okay because i'm interested in t going to infinity limit so i'm just splitting that integral into two parts okay and and really not doing anything else and here then you have dt prime n times d plus gamma i have just omitted the arguments so what does that give so this integral 0 to t not dt prime n times this when you have done it will be some constant it will give you some constant plus this integral okay in this integral i am because i am taking t not to be very large and t also i am going to take to infinity so in that case in the integrand i can write this as um d is any way constant n is a constant the gamma function depends on t okay through this g bar but the g bar goes to gc okay g bar is goes to gc in the t going to infinity limit but because i am saying that uh, t not is also very large okay then in this in this domain from t not to t g bar is effectively gc okay so i'll just replace uh, g bar by its value gc okay and then you have n times d plus gamma of gc integrated over t prime okay and that is going to give you just t okay uh and putting the limit gives you t minus t not okay. and that t not times the other things that's a constant so that i can combine in this constant okay so all the constants that you get are put in here and you get um n times d plus gamma of gc times t okay and this is in t going to infinity limit okay because i have used this fact that in this limit the g bar takes a value gc okay and i have dropped the functional dependence and put it a constant because i am saying in this region i can approximate the gamma by just gamma of gc okay and whatever difference is comes from the constants so e really behaves as n times d plus gamma gc times t that is the dominant behavior okay t because t is going to be infinite now so this is an infinite quantity in the t going to infinity limit so i don't worry about the constant okay so that is how the no that is not e uh e is the exponent of this i am just writing the integral here so e is the exponent of this exponential of this so you get e to the this thing so this is the behavior for large t so let's using this write down the the green's function in the large t limit so g tilde n r e to the t pi pi are the external momenta here you see gr not g bar gr mr mu is equal to g tilde n r pi gc okay g bar has taken a value gc now 
okay, because I am taking T to be very large. Then M bar okay, times this exponential factor which we just found out. Okay, and this factor I can write as e to the t and d plus gamma at gc. Okay, you see this is how the the Green's function will scale with t or e to the t. Okay, so here. It is scaling a with e to the uh, scaling as e to the t power n d plus gamma g c. Okay, so the canonical dimension d, okay, is uh, I mean if it was a free theory, okay, there were no no interactions, then you would have just gotten e to the t power n d. Okay, based on dimensional analysis only. Okay, now because you are close to a fixed point. Because t is going to infinity, okay. that canonical dimension is now replaced by d plus gamma g c. This anomalous dimension at g c, okay, at the fixed point. So that's the behavior you have. So this is looking very much like a free theory, except for the fact that the you have to modify the uh, the dimension and change the uh, replace the canonical dimension by canonical dimension plus the anomalous dimension. Okay, that is how it behaves. The green function behaves in the vicinity of uh, of the ultraviolet fixed point. Okay. Now, if theory is asymptotically free, then G C is zero, right? Then G C is zero. That is what it means by asymptotically free, meaning the running coupling. This is the value of the running coupling, right? This is the running coupling constant, and that running coupling constant is zero. Okay, that's the uh, condition for asymptotically free theory. And because gamma of zero is zero, right? Gamma again you obtain from these all these um, Feynman diagrams, and if you Put the couplings to be zero. The Feynman diagrams will give you zero. Okay, so that is why the gamma will be zero. All these corrections will be uh, corrections coming from the Feynman diagrams will be zero. Okay, so except for so z will be equal to one plus zero. So that is why you have zero here. Um, so if you put this gamma equal to zero here, then this exponential factor becomes what? E to the t power n d. There is no gamma c, right? So, for asymptotically free theory, and uh, the the factor the the. And D. Okay, that is what you expect based on naive uh, dimension an analysis. Okay, so it is really behaving like a free theory um, in that limit. Okay, in this in this case for an asymptotically free free theory. Uh, sorry, uh, when you have an ultraviolet uh, fixed point with G C equal to zero. Okay, now let us um, do this in more detail. Instead of directly putting um, this this thing here, so here we just put a constant here. Okay, now we'll do it, do it with a little bit more care, and we will see that there is a minor modification to this. And um, I'm going to utilize 
some information about the beta function. Okay, so I'm going to um, take some particular theory. I'll give you a beta function of that theory and uh, how gamma function also looks like. Okay, Th these are corresponding to some theory, and then given that, I'll just figure out um, how this exponential factor behaves. Right, that's what I will do. So let's look at an example. So suppose beta function is given by this. And this is not for 5 4 theory, okay? So beta function is minus beta naught g bar cube plus higher order terms. And beta naught is positive. So that this overall thing, the beta tilde becomes negative, okay? That is beta tilde is negative. So what happens if beta tilde is negative? Okay, it will flow towards the fixed point. Okay, and um, so this is near g bar equal to zero. Okay, so I keep only the lowest order terms here, and g bar square. Suppose this is also given to you. Okay. I'm just taking out some results from another theory and giving to you. So this beta naught is the same thing here. It's a positive number, g square t. Okay. So this is the behavior of g bar, the running coupling constant, or the square of it, in uh, t going to infinity limit. So you see, if t is infinity, this is going to zero, right? Because if t is infinite, This, this denominator becomes infinite and it goes to zero. So g bar um, will be g zero. So that is a, um, this is an asymptotically free theory. Okay, so this describes an asymptotically free theory. Okay, so Sorry, I made a slight, I made a s wrong remark. So, I mean, this is not an extra assumption. This is, this is, um, you are going to get it from here. Okay, actually, this is what I am about to show you. So, let's quickly do that part. So let's see that this is what you get. So, we have already s um, written that, we have already done that integral, and we have written that t is dg bar over beta g bar and you integrate from g r to g bar and this is an expression I had shown you earlier that I had here right so I'm just writing this thing instead of lambda I'm writing g but it's the same expression so t is equal to d of the running coupling divided by beta tilde okay from uh, lambda bar of 0 lambda r is just lambda r to lambda bar. So that is what I have here. Okay, and then you substitute this thing that is given to you. Okay, this result. So this gives you from g r to g bar of t d g bar over minus beta naught g bar q. Okay, and integrating this gives you minus 1 over beta naught, that's this factor, and g bar power minus 2. So
so let me write it below and then you also divide by minus 2 1 over g bar uh, square so, so here this is with t prime okay. so you get g bar of t square after putting the upper and lower limits 1 over g r square okay. and g r is a constant because mu is fixed so what does that give you so if you solve it you get um, g bar of t square of this is equal to g r square 1 plus 2 beta naught g r square t okay all I have done is multiplied this so that gives you 1 over 2 beta naught okay then you multiply on the left hand side so it becomes 2 beta naught g r square t because I am also multiplying the entire thing entire equation by g r square so you get 2 beta naught g r square t on the left and then you take to the take one to the other side and take the inverse okay so that is what you get and this is what is the result I gave you here okay so if beta function is given to you okay that you have calculated in the argument of beta function see beta function you will get by doing the loop calculations so you did calculation at some loop okay and there in when you are drawing the diagrams you will be putting g of r okay you will not be putting gr you will be putting g of r so you do the calculation get the beta function beta function you remember it has the derivatives of z with respect to g or lambda r you get that expression and in that expression of beta which is in beta tilde which is in terms of grs you replace gr by g bar okay you replace the fixed coupling constants at mu by the running coupling and that is this expression okay so if you had done the calculation you would have gotten beta tilde of gr is equal to minus beta naught gr cube and you are just replacing gr by the running coupling okay and then we see that the running coupling behaves like this with t okay and uh, let us also so that is an assumption I have made that I am looking at such a theory in which beta function is negative and given by this and also let the gamma function be gamma naught times g bar square okay, near g bar equal to 0 okay, that is the fixed point so close to the fixed point meaning g bar is very small so I am dropping the higher order terms and gamma function is gamma naught some constant times g bar square okay so what is uh, what is gamma of g bar then gamma of g bar is equal to gamma naught and is here g bar square I will substitute this expression so I get g r square over 1 plus 2 beta naught g r square t ok this is in the large t limit because we are close to the fixed point ok because we are dropping all these terms so we are close to the fixed point so what does the exponential factor become then So the exponential factor becomes um, e to the zero integral zero to t dt prime n d plus gamma naught so that was there and d and here it was um, gamma and I am putting the expression of gamma that I have just just now calculated here right it's gamma naught times this so gamma of g bar I have to put here so gamma naught times gr square 
1 plus 2 beta naught gr square t prime. Okay. See, I have to do an integral over t prime and that is why I have written, uh, made the dependence on t bar explicit. So, because g, g bar has t dependence, right? Running coupling has dependence on time, uh, dependence on t. And that is why we have written it like this here. Because GRs, they are fixed. You have chosen a value of mu, GRs are fixed, beta naught is a constant, and now you have an explicit dependence on T. Okay, that is why we have done this thing. So we have this, uh, this exponential factor now. Okay, so now we can evaluate this. That's easy. So, um, so let's evaluate. Um, so you can just define this to be some some constant and do some change of variables, and then you will get n gamma naught over. So this is n gamma naught here over two beta naught. Okay. Do that integral, and you'll get this times log of 1 plus 2 beta naught gr square t. Okay, that's what you're going to um, get after doing this. This um, this integral, this exponential of this. It is e to the this thing. Okay, which is same as exponential of log of. Um, okay. Sorry, this is not correct. This is only um, this part. Let me write it here. So this is equal to um, so this is equal to e to the n d t. So this one, n d times this integral just gives you t. So this is this times exponential of this other part, okay, n d times gamma naught, this part. Now this is fine. Okay. This is just e to the n d t times um, so this I can put in the within the log so it, this to the let me write it down anyway this is n gamma naught over 2 beta naught okay so this is exponential so I get e to the t this thing I am writing e to the t power n d that is what you had seen earlier. This is the factor you get from knife uh, dimensional analysis. Okay, and then um, you see this is in the asymptotically free theory. Okay, the coupling has gone to zero, so it's almost like a free theory. But in a free theory, you would expect just this factor. Okay, multiplying the the Green's function. But now you have additional piece coming because of these renormalization effects. And what is that? That is, so I'll, I'll just drop this one, right? There's no, I'm in t going to infinity limit. So I have, I've been dropping all the constants. So I will drop this because one plus two beta naught g r square t, where t is infinite, is same as two beta naught g r square t. Okay, and then t going to infinity limit. So that one I'm going to drop. And you have 2 beta naught gr square t 
power n gamma naught over 2 beta naught. Okay. This is coming from, this is the canonical behavior. Okay, and this is the additional piece you are getting because of these renormalization effects. Okay, so even when your um, theory is asymptotically free, you are not going to get the canonical behavior. You are almost going to get it because this is the dominant piece, right? This is the exponential of t. So this is uh, 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 this is the most um, I mean this is the most dominant part. And then you have a uh, small variation attached to it of, of this form. And it is these, kind, these effects which were uh, observed in um, experiments. So in one of the assignments I had given you uh, about deep inelastic scattering, some kinematics I had asked you to do. And in, in these de uh, deep inelastic scattering experiments, such, um, such scaling violations. So this is a scaling behavior which you are seeing based on free theory. The violations to that coming from this factor, they were seen in this deep inelastic, uh, inelastic scattering. Okay, so th this is what leads to to scaling violations in DIS deep inelastic scattering. Okay, let me just say in words again um, what we have uh, done here. So, we have seen that if you have an ultraviolet fixed point, okay, at which the coupling constant is zero, and if you look at your um, Green's function in that limit, you would very naively expect that because the coupling constants are going to zero, the scaling with these, um, the scaling of momenta, okay, would be visible as this e to the d power n d. Okay, they will just scale canonically according to the dimension of uh, that object, that n times the dimension of each of the fields. Okay, that is what you will get. But you see that here. Uh, even in that case, even when the theory is almost behaving like a free theory, even in that case, the because of renormalization effects, you see this beta naught and uh, gamma naught, these are all coming from renormalization. Okay. Because of the renormalization effects, there is a small uh, variation with t compared to what you would behavior uh, uh, predict based on just canonical uh, dimensional analysis, okay? And of course, this has also been seen in um, experiments where you are looking at strong interactions. So in deep elastic scattering, you are really looking at the strong interactions. Okay, so, um, I think I will stop this course here and um, let me just summarize or let me just tell you what things I have uh, not done actually. I have not done many, many things, but some of the things that uh, could have been fit in this, but there, was, there is no time left, is um, I should have also talked about the renormalization beyond one loop. Okay. So we talked about renormalization only at one loop in 5-4 theory. And uh, one can show that theory is renormalizable, meaning you can get finite answers up to any loop order in 5-4 in theory. Okay? And there's a general procedure of doing that, and I will recommend you to uh, look at the literature and, and, um, and see how, how that is done. Okay, and um, yeah, we have mostly covered what I had planned in this course, except for this one omission of um, showing uh, renormalization beyond one loop. But more or less, we covered everything. 
and these techniques which we have learned here in the context of in the simplest context of uh, real scalar theory Pfeiffer theory they are applicable with very minor modifications to other cases so when you are doing electrodynamics or quantum chromodynamics okay the same kind of things you will be um, doing there also so we have learned the the renormalization and renormalization group in the simplest setting but there is no real uh, no not much difficulty except for some technical ones in studying um, gauge field theories and QCD and, and quantum electrodynamics. Okay, so wish you all the best for your exam and uh, hope um, this course was useful for you. Okay, see you. Bye-bye then.